Well, that's just been a weirdly eventful transfer window. It's just weird. Hello and welcome to part 60 of It's Coming Home. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two League 2 games for you. We're away against Colchester and at home against Bury. Since you were last with me, um, we won lots of games and then, fingers crossed, got our two boring draws out of the way off camera so we can get back to a nice four or five game winning run again with you lot watching. That's the plan. Uh, I mentioned the transfer window was weird though. And it really was. Um, weird thing number one, wasn't even an in a proper incoming transfer. Um, it was David Sawinski has done a Mick Powell. Um, he was out on loan at Mansfield where, I mean, he's not exactly pulling up trees at Mansfield. Um, but we got one of those notifications come through saying he's probably good enough to come and play for our first team now. So we recalled him. He's better than Lerick Fernandez. The only problem is he's injured. Um, he's nearly fit again. You won't see him play in the first game. He might make his home debut in the second game. But as soon as we recalled him, we were getting offers of £100,000 plus from championship clubs for him. We've managed to survive the transfer window without letting him go. So you are going to get to see him play. It might not be today, though. It depends on fitness. I obviously haven't seen him play yet either. Um, we also sold Tyreek Wilson because we didn't need this many left-backs and uh, they offered money for him and he was on £500 a week. There didn't seem a lot of point in keeping him. And there was a bidding war for our third-choice goalkeeper, um, who I don't even know if he's in the first-team first squad. He's not. Um, he, In fact, we can find him by looking at future transfers that were arranged. Tom Woodend, bidding war for the last three days of the transfer window got to the point where Sir Enoch knew who went over my head and accepted an £80,000 offer from Aston Villa for him and then did the same with an offer from Birmingham. And I just thought, you know what? I don't care where you go if you're definitely going. Accept all offers. Um, at which point Hearts came in and offered him a pre-contract. So he's going to Hearts for free. This guy is another one we'll never see play. He came in for Manchester City. He's got five-star potential, uh, but he's not as good as Humphreys or Civita. So... Yeah, we didn't make any money on that one either. We still haven't mastered this bringing in young players and turning them into money, which we need to master, really, because we can't rely on cup runs forever. And then to cap off the weirdness, um, I brought in a few free transfers, just youngsters again, that I'm trying to turn into money and I'll get wrong. Uh, but then the Seal, my director of football, he just got weird. Just like in Non-League to Legend, I let my director of football take care of my loans for me. It's where Prince Chiddy came from. And he signed three players on loan that I don't know that I'm going to use very much or at all. Ben Richardson is a 19-year-old centre-back. I mean, he's a good centre-back. He's six foot five, and tall centre-backs always go down well in my book. To be fair, he's better than anyone we've got. Centre-back wasn't a position we needed to strengthen, though. And then he continued in positions we didn't need to strengthen and signed a left-back on loan from Watford, Paul Denton, who, again, is, I mean, he's as good as Weber, better than Pasala, better than... The guy we just sold, whose name I've already forgotten. But we didn't need him. And then, last moment of weirdness, Ken Sinclair is just a just a right midfielder. He can't play on the right wing. He can sort of play wing back. But he can't play in any positions we use. I'm sure he's going to be a lovely player when he's older. But he's not getting in the team on the right wing ahead of Connor Stanley or Ainley. We're never going to play Ken Sinclair. Luckily, we're not paying any money for these players, but I think the seal isn't quite as good at bringing in loan players as Mike Phelan was for Fulham. In fact, now I'm thinking of it, he's been our director of football since we were down in the super non-league, so I imagine he's useless. And that would explain why. How do you click on him from here? The seal has judging player ability of four, judging player potential of five, and I let him bring my loans in. I don't want to sack him, though. We've been through so much together. I have, I've never sacked a member of staff yet at home. I'm not going to start now. We're stuck with the seal until he retires. So the rest of the save, then. Hopefully someone will come in and poach him. Can you poach seal? Oh, let's get into a game. What just happened? I've moved the tactics thing. Go back. Is that where you normally are? This is going to ruin me for weeks now if that's been put back in the wrong place. I'll never remember where the right place was. Right, this is our team for the game against Colchester. We've got Civita in goal. We're giving Denton a debut at left-back, because why not? 
We're not giving Richardson a debut at centre-back. Proctor and Santos will be our centre-backs with Tanner at right-back. Phillips in midfield um, behind Fernandez and Wolf. No room for Sawinski yet because he's injured. And then Tyler, Powell and Stanley are our front three. Chiddy, obviously, on the bench because uh, of what happened yesterday that I don't want to talk about. So let's give them their squad numbers and get into the match. Hopefully, a nice, impressive performance. That's what we're looking for. We want goals again. It's been a, it's been a little... In fact, let's be assertive. Um, let's show them why we're... I mean, we're second in the form table in the league. That shows you what a weird league League 2 is, certainly this season, because as you've seen from our schedule and from watching the videos over the last few days, our form is erratic. We're not, we're not a particularly informed team. However, we're 10 points clear at the top of the league. We're second place on the form table. We've got the best goal difference in the league. A lot of that goes down to Adam Siviter in goal because he's a hero. But I don't understand why there isn't a single team in the division who are just going to put a, ring, a run of results together. It seems insane, especially for a division where the top three get automatic promotion. It really does look like anyone's anyone's promotion, really. I guess going down as far as even the likes of Swindon, Colchester, Notts County, even in Stradown is Newport, they're probably all looking at that thinking it's not impossible for us to get promoted yet because no, there is not a team in the division that's winning five or six games in a row at any point. So if someone can figure out a way to do that, they're suddenly right up in contention. Equally, you lose three in a row and it doesn't really harm you because everyone else is losing one or two in that period as well. It's a very strange division. Phillips now plays it out to Tanner. Are we going to have any kind of action before half time? Tanner hits the post with what I think was a deflected cross. But no, nothing happening. Are we going to make it three draws in a row? I thought by getting the two draws out of the way, we'd be safe from this nonsense. When are we ever going to look like free scoring, attacking home again? I might just be aggressive. I am far from pleased. Just please do something. Somebody do something. It's crying out for David Sawinski, the man who's done a Mick Powell. Hope for, I mean, imagine, you've seen how good Lerick Fernandez is. This guy, according to my assistant manager, who, bearing in mind the judging ability of my director of football, my assistant manager is probably a clueless buffoon as well. So take it with a pinch of salt. But David Sawinski is the best midfielder at the club, apparently. He's never played a game for us, but he's better than Lerick Fernandez. I am eager to see what that looks like. I'm just confused. Right, we're going to take off Mick Powell, bring on Chiddy. We're going to take off Tyler. No, we're not, because we haven't got... What's his face on the bench? I thought we had Tilly on the bench, but apparently we don't. Um, we'll take off Wolf and bring on De Havilland. And that will do for now. There's a lot of midfielders who are going to look at the arrival of Sawinski back from his loan, thinking, what is the point? Jarvis, De Havilland, Will Collar. These are players who... Looked like they had quite promising possibilities here at home. I've never really forced their way into the team on a regular basis. It didn't take us a huge amount of time to go back to Fernandez and Wolf, the partnership we've used for like the last two seasons. Although Wolf out of position, I think we probably that might be what we need to sort out the attack. Perhaps we need Fernandez and Wolf both on attacking instructions, like they have been down in the lower divisions. Well, there you go then. We've met Paul Denton. He's made his debut. He's got sent off. Don't ever expect to see him play for us again because we've got Weber and Pasala. We didn't need another left back. And this one's just dropped us right in the turd. My word, what an idiot. Um, he will, I promise you he will never play for us again. I don't know what to do. I don't know, I'm tempted to take off Tanner and bring on the other new boy, Richardson, and go to three at the back. I don't want to sacrifice anything defensively. Uh, attacking, sorry, because I want to win the game. You know what? I want to test my theory that that's what we need to do. This It looks like I'm asking for trouble. We'll go three at the back with Phillips protecting, but make the midfield more attacking than it was. This can't go wrong. Let's show some passion. Idiot, idiot, idiot. My word, what an idiot. Proctor's had a good game. That's that's good. I'm glad Proctor's had a good game. But the rest of the team are crying out for some for some new youth, new Patreon youth coming through. And hopefully we've got a week's rest now before the next game so we can actually show... Oh, what a save. 
What a save from Civita again. I know it was offside, but the man is not human with the saves that he makes. Stanley, last kick of the game. You are aware you're on borrowed time here. Just whip it in. Plays it back to Tyler. Why are we knocking the ball around? Cross it. Forces another corner. I don't think we're going to have time to take this one. He didn't have time to take the one before and he faffed about with it. Just cross it, Connor. 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 Connor, cross it. Take the corner. My word. Ricardo Santos. And it's into the side netting. And it's nil-nil. And we have made it three draws in a row. When was the last time you saw a good performance in a video? When was the last time I saw a good performance? It just seems mad. Complaining when we're ten points clear at the top of the league. But the football we've played this season has been so dull. I just I want Sawinski to be a hero. I want something exciting. Ah. Three changes then for the Berry match. Weber comes in for Denton, who's now got a cold, and I've sent him home. Couldn't send him all the way back to Watford, though, unfortunately. As promised, David Sawinski is going to make his debut alongside Lerick Fernandez in our Patreon central midfield. And Chidi comes back in for Powell up front because you, we all watched the last game. I don't know what you want me to do. Mick Powell was rubbish again. Right, Sawinski needs a number. He is number. 36 and let's get into the game i'm putting a lot of hope for the rest of the season on david sawinski let's hope he's any good imagine if he is though um let's i want to be passionate um yeah let's talk about the fans we've got youth players in the team again this is going to be good where's his first touch that's the man we're keeping an eye on sawinski there he is and we didn't see anything happen but there's still time. He's still got an entire match to prove that he's better than Larek Fernandez. There is Sawinski. Plays it back to Phillips. Phillips to Sawinski. We've got our midfield three is all homegrown players that have come for our youth team, which is awesome. Um, Phillips out to Proctor. Proctor all the way over to Tanner. Tanner in a crossing position. Finds Tyler. Tyler puts us 1-0 up with less than three minutes on the clock. It's home one. Berry nil. Lewis Tyler. I tell you what. He scores a lot of goals from that left wing. I think his contract with Aston Villa is up this summer. We've had him for three years now. I really hope we're able to sign him permanently because if we can't, we will really, really miss those goals. We saw it at Wembley. We see it consistently through the season. Lewis Tyler's goals are absolutely invaluable. invaluable. And as it stands right now, we're 12 points clear at the top of the league with 14 games to go. Because apparently no one else is winning. Because that's just how League 2 works. Um, not seen anything spectacular from the from the Patreon boys in the middle there yet. But they still have time. Don't worry. Remember, this is Sawinski's debut for home. It's his first game in the Football League. Yes, he's supposedly the best midfielder at the club. If not the best player at the club. Because Fernandez was already the best player at the club. Um, but, you know, it's debut. He's young. Give him time. He's got... He's got until the rest of the season to pr the, he's, to prove he's any good. <laughs> if he doesn't do that, we'll give up on him. Right, passionate. Um, no, not passionate. Just assertive. Yeah, don't get complacent. Score some goals, please. Somebody. Somebody score some more goals. Let's not leave it all to our wingers. I might bring Mick Powell on in a minute. I'm going to have to because look how badly Chiddy's playing again. I think what I'm learning... Oh, there is Chiddy. Tenth goal of the season for Prince Chiddy. All that hate, and he's probably our top scorer, or it might be Powell, I'm not sure. Um, but I think what I've learned through all of this is, actually, both Chidi and Powell are good strikers. Neither of them are lone strikers. And they probably would be brilliant playing together. And there's been a couple of times where substitute, I've taken wingers off, especially while Tyler was injured, Um and I've taken Stanley off and brought Pew on and we've gone back to the diamond that we used way, way back when we were down in the Northern Premier League Division 1 East, I think was the last time we used the diamond, back when we had Harris and Powell up front together and Chiddy and Powell together with Pew behind looks excellent. But as you've seen in this game, how can I not play Tyler? How can I not play Connor Stanley? So it's it's one of those things where... There probably is a way to turn Chidi and Powell into a brilliant partnership. doesn't work in this system. Now, you could argue drop Shane Phillips and go 4-2-4. But in all my years playing football manager, I've never got 4-2-4 to work. Right, we're going to bring Collar 
on for Swinsky. That was Swinsky's debut. The, I mean, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't spectacular. I don't want two ball-winning midfielders in there. You can be a box-to-box midfielder. Um, we'll take Phillips off for Pew and stick him up there. In fact, then we can make your ball-winning midfielder defend. We're going to put you doing that. Just, I want some goals. Please, give me more goals. We're defending a one-goal lead with 20 minutes to go, and I've decided to go more attacking because a 2-1 win and an eight-game unbeaten, and that's not enough for me. <laughs> I want spectacular. Stanley's picked up an injury now, and my assistant manager thinks our new centre-back is the best man to bring on for him. I suggest that's probably not the case. Let's get Mick Powell on. You can play as a poacher. Chiddy can play as the deep-lying forward that he wants to be. Stick Pew just there behind Powell. And then you get to see almost what I was describing. This isn't quite what I was describing because Tyler's still on the pitch. But as a as a three, you sort of get to see Powell, Chiddy and Pew together. Santos has been hacked down there. And that, that feels like a red card to me. Let's get there. Yeah, these are red card. Bury down to 10 men. And hopefully that should be that. Webb has picked up an injury, which means Denton's going to be back in the team. After saying he'll never play again, he's probably playing the next match he's available for because our other left-back's now injured. This game is cruel to me at times. It deliberately makes me look like a buffoon. I'll just have to play Pasala and pretend to f- pretend Denton doesn't exist. Fernandez into Pew. Pew to Webber. Webber crosses. He doesn't. He plays it into Tyler. And you didn't get to see the front three working as nicely as I've seen them a couple of times. But I might show you that in the next episode. I'm not going to passionately say that was a good win because, I mean, it was a 2-1 win against 10 men. It wasn't, it wasn't spectacular, but nothing we've done this season has been spectacular, but we're 12 points clear or 10 points clear at the top of the league. It's the weirdest season of football manager I've ever played. We've got to, uh, we've got as far as four goals once. I'm used to having teams that score six, five and six goals fairly regularly. This is frustrating, only winning 2-1 and 3-0. Right, um, in light of the fact we're 10 points clear at the top of the league, I guess we only need two more episodes this season. So we'll definitely do Chester and Blackpool at the end. And then I guess we want something somewhere in the middle. So probably Notts County and Cambridge or Cambridge and Woking. Somewhere in there, we'll be back tomorrow. And then we'll finish the finish the season off on Sunday works for me if you've enjoyed that please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos and thank you very much for watching